The spot-free DI System 50, which is a compact version, leads to the 3100 PSI power stroke, uh, which goes through the 150-foot braided hose, 3400 uh, PSI rated, and that goes to a MTM uh, trigger, PF22, and the foam cannon. Uh, often I was asked what system I ha have for the outside unit, the outside spigot, or water source, so I thought I would show you before we start the video. I also want to share something else uh, when we're outside. Uh, keeping us warm and dry are the Kinko Hydroflector gloves. Insulated interior, waterproof exterior, really something I would add if you go outside at all for detailing purposes. All right, so we have the C6 uh, outside, and the first thing we want to do is rinse off that uh, collection of dust and grit from being into storage, and that's what we're going to do right here. I'd like to take this time now to welcome you back to the series and the channel. This is the second video of this series, which will cover a rather large project on this Z06 C6 Chevy Corvette. And we're now preparing the surface for correction. We're going to turn this paint around and we're going to preserve it as well. Next step, let's take care of that convertible top. Cloth top, so we have the appropriate cleaner. Let's spray some cleaner on the top, let it work its way into the material, and lightly agitate. I like to work the seams and the edges first using a soft detailing brush. We don't want to get overly aggressive the area where the stitching is. We don't want to fray any part of this convertible top. And then obviously we switch over to a larger brush for the larger cloth panels. And then carefully rinse. We never want to get a pressure washer any closer than two feet from the surface of a vinyl or cloth convertible top.
And with that complete, I could start to go around with my hand pump and sprayer and add a little bit of traffic film remover slash iron remover, uh, all within the wheels, wheel wells, calipers, uh, rocker panels, bottom of the door, and just around the whole bottom of the car as far as I can reach. This will be a wheels off detail, so I'm not going to get overly concerned about the wheels and calipers, but I will hit them with the foam and then rinse them thoroughly to rid myself of as much brake dust as I possibly can. On top of that, we're going to foam it and let it dwell as long as we can out here under the sunlight and light breeze. While it's doing its magic, I have time to walk around and agitate around the emblems, badges, corners, and edges. A good thorough rinse, and it's time to prepare the wash bucket. Plenty of lubrication in there, but we're going to add even more. We're going to foam it up one more time before the contact wash. After a good thorough rinse, it's a good time to take care of the ferrous metal remover and claying the car. We'll let Junior take care of that while we come inside, warm up, take a break, and talk about claying the car. We're going to talk about clay bars versus the auto scrub system and clay mitts. 
I'll let you know which one I prefer in just a minute. First, let's take a look at a new clay bar compared to one that's been used, and also a new clay mitt compared to one that's been well used. Let's take a look at a brand new clay bar. This is a mild bar, so it has very mild abrasives, but you can actually pick them up here under the microscope. This is clean, has not been used yet. You'll see the difference in just a few seconds. Okay, let's get rid of that onto one that's been used. For those of you just starting to take care of your vehicle, a clay bar will pick up attached contaminants from your vehicle. It will pick them off the car. And once it picks them off, it gets embedded in the clay. And once there's too much of uh, the dirt embedded into the clay, chuck it. Get rid of it. Get out a fresh one. Um, now, you can fold it over a few times, uh, you know, mush it between your hands and, and get a clean side every once in a while. But uh, I would, you can only do that so many times before you need to uh, rid yourself of that dirty clay bar. You can't rinse it free. So let's get to uh, a mitt now, which you can rinse free. And we'll grab the new one, put it under a microscope to show you what it looks like. You definitely want to rinse these thoroughly before you start to use them out of the package You'll see why right here. Now, let's get one of those that's been used many, many times. Under the microscope, you can see it has the, the raised ridges there, uh, but it has been rinsed thoroughly after the last use. And unlike a clay bar, you can see that grit will rinse free. Now, let's get to the part where I could share that I use a clay bar. Uh, I, I go through many, but rather than... Um, rinsing and using one of these mitts over and over again and maybe being more cost effective i think the clay bar is more effective at getting those bonded contaminants off the surface of your car compared to one of these i would like to know which one of these you prefer let me know down in the comments section and why Okay, time to dry the car, and I'll just use the larger leaf blower here to get as much moisture off of it as we can before we pull it back inside, back into the shop, so it's not dripping all over the place. Then I'll get the smaller blower out, the shop blower, and go around the mirrors and the emblems and the headlights and taillights and get the rest of that moisture out of there and out of the way before correction. Looking much better already, all cleaned up. Uh, but we will get the lights out, and I'll show you what we're going to correct in the next portion of the video. This is going to be the fun part for me. I love the correction portion of the detail. Um, and this is more about the process and uh, some of the technique and less about the product in these type of series. But I will try and remember everything you, I used and put them in a link down below in the description box for you. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. Catch you in the next video when we start the correction.